think there's a preference for developing SNCs to start in Olympic sports, like obviously the QAS and Australian Institute of Sport at that time was pretty impeccable in terms of the practitioners that have come from it over the last couple of decades, but uh, as well as, of course, uh, pro sports. But do you think there's a preference on either side or is it just going with your gut and what you're most passionate about to start with and see where that leads you? Oh, look, I, I probably don't want to comment on any one person's individual journeys because everyone gets into it in different ways, right? So mm. I don't think that there's any one right way to do it. Um, but I do think as your career progresses, it's important to get a well-rounded education in, across many sports. You know, I, you know the, the, the definition of, of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd, I'd rather have, you know, a, a, a career of 20 years having, you know, five or six different experiences in different places and, and being able to build upon those experiences every step of the way um, than, than just be pigeonholed into one sport or one club. What would be some of your favourite ways to build a relationship with them, but then also be able to uh, apply the knowledge that you're learning? Yeah, look, I think, you know, if, if I look back at the people that I've worked with over, over time, it's just, you know, built, in terms of building the relationship, it's it's really just being interested in them as a person. You know, what makes them tick and 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 trying to understand their journey. You know, so, um, you know, I've, I found when, you know, if I, if I talk about Kelvin, for example, you know, I, I used to love having him in the gym, you know, when, when he'd come around and he'd, you know, he'd see what you were doing and, and, you know, he might chip in and, you know, have a different way of coaching an athlete to, to get the outcome that you were looking for. Um, and, and he'd sit there or he'd walk around with you and share some of those stories and, and then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, the guy, honestly, he could talk for five hours straight without taking a breath, I reckon. Um, <laughs> but he's one of those, he's one of those people that, you know, when they do that, you're hanging on every word, yeah. every step of the way anyway. So just waiting for that little knowledge bomb to drop, you know, that little pearl of wisdom to come out of his mouth. And, and there's plenty of them when he, when he talks. So, um, yeah, so that, like, I suppose that's, that's what I love with with those guys. And, and you mentioned the SNC that's working across three different um, sporting athletes uh, in terms of population. Well, if they're you know, at, at the QS for that period of time for, for the four-year cycle or three-year cycle this year, this Olympic cycle, will they stay with that group of athletes all the way through? Or is it, you know, obviously if there's change in the department with people getting different jobs so forth, yep. it makes sense there's change, but they shuffle the cards. But is that the sort of plan to have stability all the way through or from a, to keep things interesting because it is like a slow bed, like you mentioned from the staff, as well as athletes perspective, you, you change the voice um, amongst the team. Yeah. Look, I think, I think most of the time we like to try to keep it based on an Olympic cycle. Yep. You know, so you have that continuity all the way through. Um, you know, if you look at an Olympic cycle in years one and two, um, you can really try a lot of different stuff. You know, year one tends to be a bit of a rebuild, you know, mm. from my perspective. So you have that rebuild phase that, you know, that opportunity for the athletes to deload, recover, regenerate and get enthusiastic again. It's a better conducive environment for, for development as the, as the whole being. Oh, for, look, for, from a development perspective, I, I, would, I think that the Olympic sport environment so less um, stress, stress and expectation less stress, from a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. yeah, correct. You know, it's it's less insular. Uh, I feel like there's, I feel that there's more opportunities to be able to get out there and, um, you know, have different friendship groups and and all of that sort of stuff. Whereas in that team sport environment, it's a lot more tribal. It's a lot mm. more, you know, you, you're hanging out with each other day in day out. You're away together. You, you know, all of those. You're eating, sleeping. You know, you know, if you go away, you, you you're sharing yeah, a room with. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. um, uh, look. So, from a development point of view, from a personal development point of view, um, I think probably that Olympic sport environment probably does give those opportunities because Olympic a lot. Most of our Olympic athletes also have to work for a living outside of of performing their sport. What about rehabilitation? Like at a pro sport, there might be one person that solely sort of looks after rehab no matter what athlete gets uh, injured mm. 
Um, or how does it work uh, in your department? Is it do you have certain athletes, and if your athlete gets injured, you look after them for till they return to their performance, or is yeah. it done amongst the team? Yeah, no, pretty much. It's 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 that collaborative approach between the physio and SNC and the coach, uh, and and yeah, you know, we'll we'll then start depending on what what's happening from a rehab perspective, we'll then start to include you know, the movement scientists and, and physiologists in with that rehab trajectory as well, mm. you know, to, to get their input to, you know, to make sure that the athletes are coming back uh, in a state where they're able to complete full training and, and, and get back out to competition as fast as possible. But it's not that you, you would then hand an athlete over to the rehab coach who then takes care of that for the next four to six weeks or whatever it might be. And then there's a gradual, you know, phased return to training. 